Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Devedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the cellular structures of the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. And in the previous two, three lectures, we have focused more on to the structure and as well as function of the different uh, parts what is present in these type of cells. So when we were discussing about the prokaryotic cell, we have discussed about the plasma membrane, uh, we have discussed about the cell membrane, we have discussed about the uh, plasmids and we have also discussed how you can be able to isolate the plasmids and how the plasmids can actually be able to exist in three different forms. And uh, subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the eukaryotic cell. So when we were talking about the eukaryotic cell, we have discussed about the plant cell and as well as the animal cell. We have discussed about the differences between the plant cell and the animal cell and uh, we have also discussed about the different types of membrane bound organelles what are present in the uh, eukaryotic cell. So we discuss about the nucleus, we discuss about the mitochondria, chloroplast, uh, lysosomes, uh, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulums and at the end we have also discussed about the plasma membranes and while we were discussing about these cell organelles. We were also discussing about their structures, functions and uh, what is their contribution in uh, regulating the different events within the cell uh, within the cell. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how you can be able to study these individual organelles. So although the membrane bound organelles are not present within the reprokaryotic system, we can still be able to uh, isolate the different fractions from the prokaryotic cell and we can be able to study those fractions. So let's start today's lecture. So uh, before uh, getting into the detail of these uh, aspects where we are actually going to study how you can be able to fractionate the cells, how you can be able to isolate a particular fraction, let's understand that we have the uh, prokaryotic cell, we have the eukaryotic cell and within the eukaryotic cell you can be have the unicellular eukaryotic cell such as yeast or you can have the uh, uh, multicellular uh, prokaryotic uh, eukaryotic cell such as animal cell, plant cell or the fungi. All these cells are very different from each other and that is why the first question comes if you want to isolate a particular fraction of these cells how you can be able to grow these cells. And if you want to grow these cells, you are actually going to provide them the necessarily nutrition. So let's see what are the different nutrient what is available for these cells. So when we talk about the growth medium, the so growth medium of a host organisms is required to produce the four major basic biomolecules. One is protein, second is carbohydrate, third is lipid. And the fourth is the DNA or the RNA. Now, when we want to synthesize the proteins in a organisms, the proteins are made up of, of the amino acids. And these amino acids are actually going to be made up of, of the five different types of atoms such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. In comparison to that, the carbohydrates, carbohydrates are commonly known as sugar. They are made up of, of the three different types of uh, atoms, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Then lipids, lipids are made up of, of the fatty acids, right. So lipid is a, poly, is, a, is a derivative of the fatty acids and the fatty acids are made up of, of the different types of atoms such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulfur. DNA and RNA mostly are made up of, of the nucleotides and these nucleotides are made up of, of the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus. The role of these biomolecules are different. For example, the protein is a building block. So it actually requires for making the different types of structures. I am sure you might have seen the different types of protein what are present in the different uh, parts of the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cell. Remember that the different types of receptors what are present onto the plasma membrane or different types of protein 
complexes are present in the mitochondria for ATP synthesis and the kinds of things. So those are the building blocks. Uh, whereas the carbohydrates and lipids are mostly being used as a source to provide the energy. Energy in terms of the burning of these molecules so that you can be able to produce the ATP and then this ATP would be uh, you know the going to be the molecule which going to be supply the or which can actually going to carry the high energy bonds and that actually going to carry the AT energy from one part to the other part. Lipids are also being mainly being used for the energy, right? So if suppose an uh, organism want to move from one part of the uh, dish to the another part of the dish or one place to another place, it actually requires the nutrition energy for the locomotions. And uh, the energy comes from the mainly from the carbohydrates and the lipids. Similarly, we have, we require the DNA and RNA. So for DNA, RNA is a, always been a part of the genomic content of the organisms either it can be dna or rna so the uh, anyway we are going to discuss in detail about the genomes and that time you it will be clear uh, uh, in what are the organisms where you are actually going to have the rna as the organisms so apart from these three molecules so actually you require a nutrient source which actually can be able to provide you the carbon hydrogen oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur and as well as the phosphorus. So if you take a nutrient media or if you require a growth media which can actually be able to supply you the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur and if that is actually going to uh, you know so that is good enough for a, for a cell to assimilate the different types of building blocks such as amino acids, sugar, fatty acids or nucleotides and ultimately they are actually be able to generate the biomolecules such as protein, carbohydrate, lipids and DNA and RNA and at the end they are actually going to use these molecules for running their uh, metabolisms, running their different types of activities and that's how they are actually going to use this for their growth. Apart from these two, uh, these uh, major molecules, you also require the minor quantity of the minerals or the vitamins. So considering these, you can actually be able to design the different types of growth medium, which is going to be used for, by the host cell or by the uh, prokaryotic or the eukaryotic cell for their uh, growth as well as the development. So these are the different types of atoms what is required to be provided by the growth medium okay and considering the requirement of these uh, atoms uh, you can actually get these from the different types of uh, biomolecules. So what are the different types of constituents which can be, be a part of the microbiology medium mediums. So you can actually have the amino nitrogens which is actually going to be so amino nitrogen is going to be provided by the pectones protein hydrolysates infusion and, and extracts then you require then you can actually have the growth factors so growth factor can be provided by the blood serum yeast extract or vitamin or nad then you require the energy source that can be provided by the sugar alcohol and carbohydrates then you also require the buffer because maintaining a uh, uh, you know the ph of the media is also very important for the growth so that can be done by the phosphate acetate and citrates then we can also require the mineral salts and metals so like minerals metals and cofactors so that can be provided by the these kind of uh, uh, metals then you also require the selective agents such as the uh, chemicals or antimicrobials or dye. So that is more relevant when you want to use these uh, microorganisms for other kinds of molecular biology manipulations. Then you require the indicator, indicator dyes. So in some of the media, you also require the indicator dye so that you can be able to see whether there is a change in pH or not. So for that, you can use the phenol red or neutral red. And then sometimes you also require the solid media. So solid media, you require the agar or gelatin or silica gel. So considering all these constituents or the source, you can be able to make the different types of uh, bacteria, uh, microbiology media. So you can have the um, M9 minimal media, you can have the M63 minimal media, you can have the Lura Bertani and LB media, you can have the LB 
Linux media, you can have SOB media, SOC media, YT media, Terefi broth media, super broth and TPIG. And these are the composition what I have given and these are the uh, the bacterial species what you can actually use for cultivation. So you can actually use the M9 media for cultivation of the E. coli and other kind of E. coli strains. Similarly, you can use the uh, these kind of media for uh, you know for making the competent cells and all that. So all these uh, terms are probably will be new to you, but it will actually go. You will understand these when we are going to discuss about the different types of uh, molecular biology aspects. And uh, for example, this YT media, YT media is uh, required to the production of phage, phage productions and all that. So, so how the first question comes, how you are actually going to prepare a microbiology media? So for preparing a microbiology media, what you require is you require uh, constituents. So for example, if I take an example, you can actually require the peptone, you can require the yeast extract, you require the so, NACL and so on. So for preparation of microbiology media, you dissolve the component in one liter of the distilled water and then you cover the top of the flask with a cotton plug and autoclave the solution at 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. And so that you are going to do in the autoclave, right? And uh, what are the precautions while you are making the microbiology media? So ratio of media volume and culture flask, that is very important for aeration. So for example, if I am going to make the 250 ml uh, medium right then it has to be prepared in one liter flask so that you can actually have the enough aeration because you when you are going to grow the bacteria bacteria require the oxygen and you cannot open the cotton plant right so bacteria require a certain amount of oxygen for gaseous exchange so that it can take the oxygen and it can actually be able to release the carbon dioxide and that is actually going to decide what will be the final growth of this particular bacteria. Then you require that the media components should be hygroscopic and while weighing avoid the moisture. So store in a cool and dry place. So you can understand that if there will be a moisture then the amount of uh, actual powder is going to be lower because you are actually getting the weight of the water as well. So that is actually going to make the media uh, less uh, nutritious for the bacteria. Then while autoclaving, the open the autoclave only after it is cold because the water is boiling inside the autoclave and it is actually going to have the vapors. So you have to take those kind of precautions. Then you are actually going to avoid the charring of the media component. So charring means you are actually going to, you should not burn the uh, media component because if they got burned, then for example, if the glucose got burned, right? So glucose is actually going to be get converted into carbon. And this, car this form of carbon is not suitable for any kind of biological system to assimilate, right? So that you cannot use. Then you also require the solid media should be poured in a plate once it is cold because if you pour the media which is very hot then it is actually going to destroy the uh, other kinds of additives. For example, if you are adding the antibiotics or if you are adding the selection pressures and all that then it is actually going to destroy or inactivate them. So the various antibiotic or nutrient supply should be added to the media when the temperature is less than 50 degrees Celsius. Yes. So this is all about a theoretical aspect, how you can be able to prepare the microbiology media. We have prepared a small demo clips to explain you how you can be able to prepare the microbiology media in the lab and how you can be able to do the autoclaving and all that. Hello everyone, in this video we are demonstrating how to prepare bacterial culture prep. For preparing culture prep, we need three components. One is peptone, yeast extract and sodium chloride. For 100 ml of culture broth, we need 1 gram of peptone, 0.5 grams of yeast extract and 1 gram of sodium chloride. I am going to weigh individual components and to dissolve it in double distilled water. Then we, we have to autoclave the media. Before weighing, care should be taken. Spatula is clean 
and the balance is 10. After weighing, we have to clean the spatula and keep it in original position. And during weighing, care should be taken to avoid contact with the, any of these media components. After weighing the media components, we have to dissolve them in double distilled water. So initially, we are dissolving in 80 ml of distilled water. Once the components completely dissolved, we have to make up the volume up to 100 ml. While it is stirring, we have to prepare cotton plugs for the uh, flasks. For preparing cotton plugs, you have to take one thick layer of sheet of cotton. With your two hands, fold like this. Once the media dissolution is complete, we have to pour into the flask. We have to pour up to 100 ml. So we use only one third of the place, remaining space is empty. This is used for aeration purpose and also ensure proper auto cleaning. In order to check whether the components are auto cleaved or not, the media is auto cleaved or not, we use sterility indicator. This is paper based sterility indicator. We have to paste on to the flask and we have to autoclave. If the autoclave is properly finished, then we will see the white strips turning into the black one. So this is the indication of the autoclave process is complete. Now the media components are completely dissolved. Now we have to pour into the flask. Cap the mouth with cotton plug and wrap the aluminum pile. Tie it with rubber band. Now this is ready for auto cleaning. Once the media preparation is complete, we have to sterilize the media in order to use further applications. This is a typical autoclave where you can see temperature and pressure indicator and these are the pressure knobs and this one is quick pressure release knob. You can use when you, you, you are in a hurry you have to use this one but I will prefer not to use this one. Let it go on its way.
We have to turn on the auto play. So you can see here the bulb is glowing. Before keeping the media components to autoclave, make sure that the heater inside the autoclave submerged with water. Now I am going to keep the media components in the basket which we use for the autoclave. Then keep this one inside the autoclave. While closing the auto crew, make sure that you are closing in opposite direction. Once the pressure and temperature reaches 121 degrees degree celsius and 15 gnp pressure you have to hold on that point for 20 minutes then you have to turn off the machine let it cool down and remove the components the same procedure you have to while opening you have to open it opposite direction to conclude the video demonstration we have discussed how to prepare bacterial culture media and how to prepare cotton bags and autoclave it. During culture uh, weighing up the media, we have to make sure that the components, media component should not be exposed to air because those substances are, those substances absorb the moisture and become uh, liquefied. So another thing is that uh, for cotton plug preparation, we have to take a single layer of a cotton, then we have to fold it. After autoclaving, we should not release pressure uh, in a single shot. Let it go and come to uh, normal pressure, then we have to open uh, autoclave. So with this, uh, the video is over. Thanks for watching. Now, when we talk about the eukaryotic cell, right, because you also require the studying the different uh, fractions of the eukaryotic cell, the simplest eukaryotic cell is the yeast. So you can actually be able to use the some of the yeast media. So you can actually be able to use the CSM media, you can use the YPD broth, you can use the YP gal, you can use the standard minimal media and you can use the yeast nitrogen based media and all that and I have given the composition for one liter what you can actually be able to use and th this is the application so uh, for example the YP gal media is the standard media for S survey C for uh, omitting the glucose repression and all that similarly YPD broth media is commonly being used for the yeast media for the maintenance and propagation of uh, Pichia pectoris and S survey C Right, so Pichia pectoris and SRVCs are the most common yeast which are being used in the laboratories. And method of preparation is almost the same as, like, as per the media composition, the constituents are being added in the 900 ml of water and autoclave. Then you allow the medium to cool down and then you add the 50 ml of filter sterile 40% glucose so that the final concentration will become 2% and adjust the final volume to a 1 liter if necessary. So this is about the yeast media. Now uh, uh, moving to the next media, which is the uh, mammalian cell culture media, right? So initially we discuss about the basic media, right, which is going to be utilized by the unicellular uh, eukaryotic cell. Now you can use the more specialized media, which is going to be used for the by the more specialized mammalian cells. We can still uh, so for the mammalian cell culture media, which is you see this, this is a DMEM media, right? So this is a DMEM media, which is prepared and uh, the composition is that you are going, so DMEM com uh, constituents are actually very, very high. So you require large amount of amino acids, 
different types of sugar different types of other kinds of so it when you are going to buy the demium media from the vendor it is actually going to provide you the powder so you require the 13.4 grams of the powder for one liter then you require the sodium bicarbonate which is 3.7 grams per liter and then you also require the fetal bovine serum which is fbs so 10 percent so normally you are going to get the fbs of 10 100 percent and then you also require the antibiotics so you are actually going to use the one percent so 100 from the 100 x you are going to use the one x how you're going to prepare the cell culture media to explain the method of media preparation we are taking the example of demium media so add the 13.4 grams of dry powder media into the water and mix it to dissolve it completely then you add the 3.7 grams of sodium bicarbonate mix completely and adjust the pH to 6.9 to 7.1 using the one normal NaOH or one normal HCl. Finally, you add the cell culture grade water to the media to bring it to the final volume. Sterilize the media using a sterilized filter, mid filter with a pore size of 0.22 micron. Then you are actually going to add the supplements such as the antibiotics and serum can be added to the sterilized solution using the aseptic uh, techniques within the bioseptic cabinets. Uh, this is about all about the theoretical explanations. So we have also prepared a small demo clips to explain you how you can be able to prepare the media within the uh, within the laboratory or within the bioseptic cabinets. Hello everyone. My name is Mohammad Rafi, a research student at IIT Guwahati in Biosciences and Bioengineering Department. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to prepare cell culture media for mammalian cells. For preparing cell culture media, there is a step-by-step -step process. First, we need to weigh the components of the media and dissolve it in required amount of water. Then we need to set the pH using pH strip. And then we need to filter the media using 0.22 micron filter to make it aseptic. For further use, we can also aliquot the media and store it in 4 degrees. In this video, we will be demonstrating how to prepare mammalian cell culture media. For that purpose, we need dry cell media, which is DMEM, double cross modified Eagles media as to a high glucose. And we need FBS, fetal bovin serum. And we need antibiotic cocktail comprised of streptomycin and antiseptic. The basal media provides inorganic materials, amino acids, which are required for basic development of cell and the FBS is used for providing both factors to the cell. We cannot autoclave this media because it might degrade the components of the media. For that purpose, we use 0.22 micron filters. This is a 250 ml bottle top filter. Now I will be demonstrating how to prepare filters. We have to pack, pack it closely so that it doesn't allow any leakage. And after this, we have to put it for autoclave. This is an autoclavable bottle pop filter. After we have packed the filter, we have to keep it for auto -gliding. For that purpose, we use indicator to check whether our filter has been auto or not. When the lines on this strip turns black, it means that the filter has been auto -gliding. In order to prepare media, now we will be adding the basal media to the already auto 
double distilled water. We can use double distilled water or milky water for that purpose. After adding media, we need to stir it on a magnetic stirrer for the components to dissolve completely. We can either use double distilled water or milky water, but double distilled water is more preferable as it contains more ions than milky water. After the media components have dissolved completely, we need to set the pH of the media. For that purpose, either we can use pH meter or pH strips. In this case, we cannot use pH meter as the, the bulb of the pH is sensitive to, to the media components and may get corroded. After the media components have been dissolved completely, we will be able to set the pH of the media. After the components of the media have been dissolved completely, we now need to adjust the media pH of the media. The bright red color indicates that the pH of the media is in the range of 7.2 to 7.4. If the color of the media turns purple, then it indicates that the media is acidic, uh, basic. If the color of the media turns yellow, then it indicates that the media has become acidic. Now we will be checking whether our media falls in the range of 7.2 to 7.4. After the media has been set, we now need to filter the media inside the biosafety cabinet as we have added the constituents in the non aseptic condition. After the media components have been completely dissolved and the pH has been set, we now need to sterilize the media using filter, membrane filter media. For that purpose, we use class 2 biosafety cabinets which are used for handling mammalian cell cultures. So this is a typical biosafety cabinet in which we perform the filtration for media. This is the control panel which, we, which is used to operate this machine. This is the on and off switch. This is the switch for normal light. This is the switch for UV light. Now I will be demonstrating how to filter the media. Now we are going to filter the media. For that purpose, we need a suction pump which can be connected to the bottle top filter. This suction pump is for the purpose of extracting the air from the bottle top filter so that we can filter the media. Initially, we need to check the media, we need to check the bottle top filter with less media to check whether if there is any leak or not. For that purpose, we are going to add around 50 to 100 ml of media. As we can see that there is no leakage in the filter, we can proceed with the filtration.
after the media has been filtered, we now need to add FPS and antibody in order to make it complete media. The complete media comprises of serum, whereas the incomplete media does not contain serum. We are adding 100 ml of fetal bovine serum in order to make it 10% FPS containing serum. With this, we have prepared 1 ml of DMEM complete media comprising of 10% FPS and 1% antibiotic solution. So far, we have seen how to prepare cell culture media for mammalian cells. Although there are some precautions to be followed. Like when we are, when we are setting the pH of, pH of the media, we need, we need to use pH strips instead of using the pH meter. There are some components in the media that can clog onto the bulk of the pH meter and reduce its efficiency. Secondly, when we use the media, we need to thaw the media from 4 degree to 27 degree. But we need to thaw it first to room temperature and then to 27 degree to avoid change in the pH of the media. And also if we are producing the media in larger quantities, we have to aliquot as per our requirements and then use in order to avoid contamination and change in pH of the media. Thanks for watching the video. So wh while you are going to prepare the media, you also have to consider the different types of uh, different types of precautions. For example, the pH of the media. The so pH of the media should not be between 7 to 7.4, right? So this is the physiological pH. It should not be above to this or it should not be below to this because that is actually going to adversely going to affect the uh, growth and as well as the other kinds of uh, features of the uh, of the cells. Uh, filtration, the filtration should be performed at a very low speed so that you should not, fil while you are filtering, you should not compromise the pore size of the membrane and uh, if you are going to filter at a very high speed, you are actually going to generate the shear stress and because of that shear stress, you are actually going to increase the pore size. You know that the pore size is um, pore, so, pore size of these membranes are uh, 0.22 micron, right? So if you are actually going to bring a very high speed, the pore size may grow up and it becomes like 0.25 micrometer, or it could be even 0.4 micrometer, depending on how fast you are going. So if you become 0.4 micrometer, some of the bacteria which are lower to this value are actually going to enter into the your media apart from that when you are spinning or when you are uh, filtering at a very high speed you are also going to take up the air and air is nothing but the uh, which contains the microbiology right it, it can contain the uh, pathogenic bacteria then you are actually going to add the serum which is heat inactivated serum then you also require the antibiotics and you are actually going to check the contaminations. So when you prepare a media, what you are going to do is you are going to take a small dish and you are actually going to put the 10 ml media and put it into 37 degrees Celsius for two days. And if, that, if nothing will grow, right, so then you can observe this plate uh, and uh, if this plate does not show any kind of bacterial growth, then you can imagine that your uh, whatever the media you have prepared is perfect and it can actually be able to good to use for the uh, mammalian cell cultures uh, mammalian cell culture uh, apart from that you can also use the insect cell culture media and uh, this is the recipe what i have provided and the media preparation method and everything is almost the same as what we have discussed so this is all about the uh, cell biology and how we can be able to use the different types of techniques for the cell vaccinations. So what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the cell propagations, we have discussed about how you can be able to prepare the different types of media. So we discuss about the microbiology media, we discuss about the yeast media, we discuss about the mammalian cell culture media, 
and we have also discussed about the insect cell media. Uh, we have also shown you the couple of demo so that you can be able to um, prepare, you can be able to prepare these uh, media in your laboratory as well, such as the osmotic lysis, thermolysis, uh, sonications, mechanical methods, and so on. And once you have broken the cells, you are actually going to get the different types of fractions, whether it is a prokaryotic cell or the eukaryotic cell. Uh, you can be able to use uh, differential certification and as well as the density gradient certifications to separate the different types of organelles. And then you can utilize these fractions for your subsequent studies. For example, you can actually be able to study the mitochondria, you can be able to isolate the nucleus and do the different types of experiments. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspects related to the biological system. Thank you. Thank you.